So this is part three of our video series on the hemoglobin dissociation curve. And so our first part, we talked about the basics of the blue line here, the normal hemoglobin dissociation curve. Then part two, we talked about the red line, which was a right shift in the hemoglobin dissociation curve. And in this video, we're going to talk about a left shift in the hemoglobin dissociation curve. And it's basically just going to be an opposite of the right shift, so we won't spend too much time talking about this. But we already went over that these three variables together on the right-hand side here, a decrease in pH, an increase in DPG, and an increase in temperature, represent collectively, they're all indicators of high metabolic rate. Well, so the opposite, if we have an increase in pH, a decrease in DPG, or a decrease in temperature, well, these are all indicators of a decrease in metabolic rate. So these are areas of your body where the tissues are not particularly active. So uh, the, these indicators now, an increase in pH, a decrease in DPG, or a decrease in temperature, will actually cause a left shift in the hemoglobin dissociation curve. And so where a right shift fixes the wrong, is, was the phrase that I used, where the, the curve shifts to the right in order to increase the rate at which oxygen is going to leave the hemoglobin. Well, a left shift does just the opposite. It actually makes oxygen stick to hemoglobin more, or in more reality, he hemoglobin itself holds on to oxygen tighter when the conditions are like this. And this is referred to as a left shift in the hemoglobin loading curve. And so, again, one of the key features of this curve is that it's sigmoidal, and the downhill region, the real steep part, that represents the area, or the, the, the oxygen level, at which hemoglobin starts really letting go of oxygen very easily. Because at first, hemoglobin doesn't let go of oxygen very easily. And so what a left shift does, when you shift from the blue line here, and we just pull the line over to this green line, what that means is that it actually takes a much lower level of oxygen before it took 50 as of millimeters of mercury of oxygen in the tissues to be able to go down the steep portion of this graph and kick off a lot of oxygen into those tissues. Well, a left shift makes it so that you have to get down to, in this example, right around 42 millimeters of mercury before your hemoglobin start giving off oxygen. So a left shift is going to lock in the oxygen to the hemoglobin more. So that's kind of the term I remember, and it may or may not work for you, but a left shift locks in the oxygen. It makes hemoglobin hold on to it just a little bit more, and it's not permanently locked in, but it just makes it hold on to the oxygen so that it actually doesn't leave the hemoglobin quite as easily.